In this Lightroom color grading tutorial, guys, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this beautiful, warm, rich tone wedding look in your images using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and open up Lightroom. Now, I made this specific preset for a wedding I did recently at Homewood Hall in England. Now, it's a beautiful venue and it had a lot of wood in it and I've ended up naming this preset for Mahogany. Now, the reason I've named it that is because that's predominantly what the wood was, but I, it's, it offers this really nice rich tones as you can see by some of the sample photos. I really, really like this effect. So what I want to do is share it with you today because it's probably, it's ended up being by writing my most used preset for weddings. Right, so this is the photo that we're going to be using in today's tutorial. So let's go ahead over to the develop panel on the right hand side and then drop down to the basics panel. Now, as you can see, the white balance is slightly off. We're going for this warmer tone in this specific kind of instance. So let's go ahead and warm it up in the temperature slider. So because I shot in raw, we've got our Kelvin number, but if you've shot in JPEG, you'll be just a plus and minus. So what you want to do is increase the temperature of your photo. Now I'm going to increase it to 7,500 Kelvin, which I believe is about plus seven uh, when it comes to JPEG, but experiment, see what works uh, specifically for you. And then the tint slider, I'm actually happy with the tint in this particular instance. So we're gonna leave uh, exposure and contrast alone in this specific instance. We're gonna drop down to highlights and we're gonna drop that down slightly. So we're gonna drop that down by minus uh, 55. And then we're gonna go for plus 55 for the shadows. So we wanna kind of starting to balance it slightly. Then what we're going to do is go to the whites here. As you can see, they've become a little bit soft in this specific instance. So we're going to raise up those. We're going to go for uh, plus 10 in this instance. And then the blacks, we want to sharpen those blacks. So we go for minus 15 there. Again, adding in contrast using these sliders. Now we're going to go to texture. We're going to add in 10% texture. Now for all portrait photos, any photo with people in it, I always recommend dropping the clarity slightly. What it will do is it will just soften those skin tones, which you want to do when it comes to portrait photos. But for landscape photos, maybe plus clarity. So plus 10, plus 15 seems to work. It just sharpens the photo slightly. So in this specific instance, we're going to go to clarity and we're going to drop that down by minus 10. Then we're going to go dehaze and we're going to add in 5% dehaze there. Now with vibrance and saturation, I'm also going to leave those alone. Okay, so we're going to do turn off basics and we're going to drop down to the tone curve. Now the tone curve, what I want to do is add a very subtle S curve. Very, very subtle. We're not going to go for an extreme look. It's going to be very subtle, but it's going to work really nicely for emphasizing those more richer tones. We can do it in the basics panel, but it's a little bit easier to do within the tone curve. So. We're gonna to go to our point curve. Make sure your parametric curve isn't selected. So make sure your point curve is. We're gonna raise up those highlights slightly. We're gonna bring down ever so slightly those shadows. And then we're gonna to go to the, the uh, black. So this is the point on the far left-hand side. I'm gonna raise that up slightly, but only by a small amount. So we're gonna go down a little bit. So we're gonna go for an effect that looks similar to this. So we're raising up those highlights quite a lot bringing down those shadows a small amount or in comparison to what, how much we've brought up the highlights, we're actually bringing them up slightly, but down as in versus how much we've increased the, the highlights there. And then we're bringing up those blacks just ever so slightly. And if I show you just the before and after of that, it brings in that slightly punchier look. So we haven't added in contrast using the basics panel, we've added in contrast using the tone curve. Okay, so let's turn off the tone curve and let's go over to HSL. So let's go ahead and change hue first. Now, HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance is a way of controlling and basically changing your color within your photo. Hue is the type of color, saturation is the intensity, and then luminosity is the brightness or darkness of that color. You might also referring it to shade as well. Okay, so let's go over to hue first. Now inside hue, we're gonna leave the reds alone, but we are gonna go to the oranges and we're gonna minus five there. Then we're gonna go to the yellows. We're gonna do uh, minus 20. Then we're gonna do greens. We're gonna drop that down by minus 10. Then we're gonna go to the aquas here. Now, not many aquas in this photo, but it might be in yours. So we're gonna drop that down by minus 10. Then we're gonna do minus 10 for the blues. Uh, lastly, we're gonna go to the purples. We're gonna increase that, so plus 10. 
And then the last one we're gonna do is magenta. We're gonna increase that by 25. Now this will start bringing out some of those more richer tones, those warmer tones, but we need to also affect saturation and luminance to get the most out of this effect. So let's go to saturation next. Now in saturation, let's go to reds, drop that down by minus 10. Let's go to oranges. We're also gonna drop that down by minus 10. Now let's go to yellows. Let's make a, lot, a little bit larger of a change, so minus 35. Then we're gonna drop down the greens by the same amount, so uh, minus 35 there. We're gonna leave aquas alone in this specific instance. And then we're gonna go down to blues, drop that down by minus 10. Purples, similar by minus 35 to yellows and greens. And then the last thing we're gonna do is go to magentas, and we're gonna drop that down by minus 20. Now the photo might end up looking a little bit darker. Saturation sometimes makes it look like the photo is darker. So that's why we need to impact luminosity last. So we go to luminosity, and what we're gonna do is go to the oranges. We're gonna drop that down by minus 20. We're gonna to go to the greens. We're gonna go, there we go. And let's go for minus 10 there. Then purple and magenta, we're gonna increase that. And that will actually bring up some of the brightness in this photo. So we we'll go for we'll go for 15 there, and we're gonna go for 15 in the magenta. Now, if I do show you the before and after of just the HSL, so we do the before and after, as you can see, we're changing and moving around where the color is falling within the photo. So if I do the before photo, you can see there's actually quite a lot of yellow in this specific instance, and it makes it look a little bit sickly. I'm not too happy with it. So what we've done with the HSL, so if you do after, you can see we've brought out those skin tones while kind of fixing that yellow and bringing more of the browns in. And we can do that, or we've done that, by messing around basically with the saturation and luminosity of the reds, yellows, and oranges that you can see there. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off that and go to color grading. Now, because we've removed a lot of colors from the photo, we want to add some in, and that's where the color grading comes in. It works quite well when you want to create more of a consistent look through a library of photos, which is why I like doing it to my presets. You remove a lot of colors and then add them in, but you're adding in the same consistent color. So when you add it into a collection, all of those colors are going to look the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our shadows here. So we're gonna affect the shadows first. Now you get few saturation and luminance of that color. So you've got your color wheel here. You can also use the sliders. So what we're gonna do is go to the shadows first. I'm gonna go ahead and add in these oranges. Now I like using the color wheel for this. So we're gonna go ahead and add in, uh, let's choose 35 in this instance. Then in saturation, we can add in that saturation again. So we're gonna add it in. I'm gonna go for about 10% in this instance here. And what I do is I'm gonna just bring it down slightly. So I'm gonna go for minus 10. So you want a hue of 35, saturation of 10, and luminance of minus 10. Okay, so we're gonna lose mid-tones alone. We're gonna go over to the highlights. Now in the highlights, we want a slightly more yellowy tone to it. So we're gonna go for 45 in this specific instance. It's not true yellow. It's just a little bit more yellow than the previous, uh, previous color. So we go 45 there. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in saturation. So I'm gonna go and add in 20 in this specific instance, and then I'm gonna bring that up slightly. So I'm gonna bring that up by 10% uh, there. So the numbers you got, hue of 45, which is more of a yellowy color, saturation of 20, and then luminance of 10. Now if I show you the before and after, this is the before, this is the after. It's a subtle change, but it will impact your photo when you're adding it to an overall collection. If you want a stronger effect, simply just increase that saturation. I like going for more of a subtle effect, so the numbers are a bit lower. If you wanna go for a stronger effect, 10, 20, 30, up even up to 50% works really nice when you're adding in that saturation. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off color grading. Now, this is just for me, but if you go into lens correction, make sure remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections is turned on. This will affect your chromatic aberration, those purple and magenta hues that you can see on contrasted edges, but also it will enable your profile corrections. So that's your lenses. Not all lenses are perfect. Some of them have issues and Lightroom can fix those issues. So barrel distortion, pincushion distortion, and even vignetting. So make sure these two buttons are ticked. As you can see, I shot this on a Sigma 24mm f1.4 art. So you can see that is selected there. And I also, as you can see, it's Sigma. So that profile correction here. You've also got a manual, so you can fix your distortion and vignetting here as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. So make sure that is selected in your photo. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is gonna go to our effects. 
Now I like adding in kind of like a, a vignette, I suppose you could say, to the to the photo. I also like using masks as well, but to keep this tutorial fairly short, I'm just going to be using the effects slider. So what you're gonna do is go to your post cropping vignette amount, and then go ahead and drop that down. Now I'm gonna drop it down to about minus 20 in this specific case. And if I show you the before and after, what it will do is it will sometimes you can use luminosity to highlight certain parts of your photo. And because the couple, or should I say, not a couple in this instance, I believe this is the dad, um, they're in the set, roughly in the center of the frame. So we can use the kind of vignette to emphasize them in the center of the frame, and it works quite nice. The only problem is, and I, it sometimes happens, what it will do is it will, it will look like the overall photo is quite dark. So what I do recommend, just going to the basics panel, just going to your exposure here, and then just simply increasing that until you're happy with the overall exposure. A vignette is obviously adding in darkness, so you might want to combat that by simply adding in some more exposure, and it will hopefully balance it out. And there we go, guys. So if I go ahead and turn that off, what I can do is show you the overall before and after. So this is the before photo, and then this is the after photo. As you can see, we've added in this really nice rich tones that you can see to the kind of the wood here. It's fixed his suit, as you can see. The skin tones aren't necessarily affected. If I show you the kind of side by side, so this is the before photo, and then this is the after. You can see we've added in, look at the background, very yellow, not very kind of almost sickly, a lot of green in it but we've completely fixed that in this specific case. Now, what I would do, so I'd go over this, I'd uh, go over any spots and blemishes or anything like that, use the masking a little bit, maybe highlight them, but overall, this is how you can get those lovely colors in your images. So again, if I show you, here is the before, and here is the after, and remember guys, save it as a preset. If you'd like to know how to create or manage your presets in Lightroom Classic, go ahead and watch this video here. But there we go, guys. That is how you can create this beautiful, warm, rich tone wedding look in your photos using Lightroom Classic.